So, I don't expect you to understand all of these things now. I'm just giving you an overview that we are going to study about these things in more detail. Do you understand overview? Overview is like aerial photo over the city. Just to get the idea, but you can't see the city in detail. Okay? So don't worry if you don't. I'm just letting you know this is what we're. Structure, right? This is the structure, and this is what we're going to be studying about. We have to start somewhere. So the first one is going to be the Batman. If you want to get more information on this, it's on the the reading file, right? I have one book and one reading file. This is in the reading file. Also the book chapter two. So <coughs> Batna, this is in the book, is chapter 6, is the, just, a, we can have a, a quick look at the book, just to, uh, show what we are using at the moment, mainly in the first part of the course, talking about this setting up for the negotiation, we're studying from chapter 1 to chapter 6.
have here prices, 12,000, 10,000. Okay. This is seller's bottom. Best alternative, right? This is buyer's bottom. Where is the where is the zone path here? Side. 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 Here to here, zone path. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. So if we make a deal at eleven thousand, if we just split the zone path, we're both happy. Okay. I got more than I wanted. I got the car for cheaper than I wanted. So we can make a nice agreement. Problem with Zopa is that. We can have seller here, 11,000, and we can have buyer here, 10,500. Now in this case, what are we going to do? This is buyer's partner, and this is the seller's partner. Is there anything we can do here? The seller won't sell for less than 11,000, the buyer won't buy for more than 10,500. Because they have a better deal, they have, he has a better option somewhere else. She has a better option somewhere else. Okay? There is no Zopa here. Can they still make an agreement? What do you think? This is a positional negotiation, just positional, maybe they won't make an agreement. But how do you think they could make an agreement? But I have I can I have a better deal somewhere else. I can sell the seller, I can sell my car to somebody else for eleven thousand. Why would I sell it to you for ten thousand seven hundred and fifty? I have another buyer. Do you understand? My partner, best alternative. I can sell it to somebody else. Okay? Let's say we have, let's say, call them people. John. John is going to buy the car for 11000 right? Okay? Mary is the buyer. Mary can buy the car from somebody else. Let's say that Mary is the buyer, right? Bob is the seller. Bob can sell to John for 11000 Mary can buy from Jane for 10500 Okay? So how can we make an agreement then? I have an option. I can sell it to Jane for 10500 Buy from Jane for 10500 Why am I going to buy for you for 10700 Right? I have an option. I can sell to John for 11000 Why would I sell to you for 10700 do you think they can make an agreement or not? No. No agreement? Does anybody think they can make an agreement? If, if they check the agreement, they use the other option, uh, give the sub more service, to contract the wrong contract. Yes, so we have to be creative. If we are creative, right, we can find value. We can look at the interest of the other person and find some value. So what did you say? What kind of value could they create? Uh, give more service and room contract. So I'll give you after service, right? For one year. If there's any problem with the car, I'll pay for fixing the car. Anything else? Maybe I'm a mechanic, so that's okay, right? <laughs> what else? Give a navigation. GPS system. GPS. Maybe I have a, G a GPS system that I'm not using at home, right? <laughs> so I, it doesn't cost me much, and I give it to you. Okay? Uh, maybe John lives far away. I don't want to have to deliver the car to John. Right? So if you agree to pick up the car, 
you're going to come to my place and pick up the car. Then maybe we can make a deal. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. So we might not have any Zoba here, but if we are creative, we look at the other person's interest. Okay? John is not going to buy the car until next week. You will give me cash now. John is going to pay with the credit card. You are going to pay with cash. Okay? So we can find a way. We look at the interest. Right? I need the money now because I want to buy a truck this week. So we match the interest and try to create value. We might be able to make, even though there's no Zopa, we might be able to make an agreement. Okay? But generally, it's easier if we have Zopa. Is that easy? Yes. To make an agreement? Yes. Okay? So with the negotiation we'll do in class, usually we'll have some Zopa <coughs> to make it a little bit easier. So, do you have any question about Zopa? So explain to your partner what is Zopa. Okay, so can you sit up here at the front of the class next to him? Can you sit up next to him? So you should sit next to the other students when you come to the class. We're going to do some discussion work. This is the buyer and this is the seller. The buyer I can buy for a cheaper price. Okay? Seller I can sell for a more expensive price. So we have four people, right? He is Mary. She is Jane. You are Bob. And I'm John. Okay? So I'm John, I offer you 11,000 for your car. Okay? He's married, he offers you 10,500. Who are you going to sell it to? To me, right? That's your best alternative, but you're negotiating with him. Okay, he's the same. Who are you going to buy from? Are you going to buy from her at 11,000? Or from, from Jane at 10,500? You're going to buy from Jane. So you two guys are having a negotiation, but both of you have better options. He has a better option with Jane, right? And you have a better option with me. So I, you could just stop your negotiation, right? Or you could try to find some value, creativity, right? So what he said, like, you can try to find things which doesn't cost you much, but is a big benefit for him, okay? You find things which doesn't cost you much and a big benefit. You have a spare navigator you're not using. Okay? So you can give that to him for free. Now it's different. Okay? You don't have to buy a navigator. Already you saved $200. Okay? Anything else? You're going to give it to fixing. You're a mechanic, so you know the car is very good. So you can guarantee for one year. But she can't guarantee for one year. Why? So now you think, she can't guarantee for one year. Maybe I'll have to pay more than $300 to fix the car. You could have a big problem. Okay, well your car, you give a guarantee for one year, maybe I'll buy your car. Can you understand? So you might be able to negotiate and find an agreement, even though you have a better option with somebody else. Do you think that's possible? You could negotiate and find an agreement? Yes. yes. There is no joker on the condition that uh, there is no other options. Like, I'm going to give GPA or something like that. If you, can, if you can't find any creative way to make value, then yes, sometimes it's better to walk away. We can see here, right? I compare, you compare your options. Your best option might be walking away. So your best option might be walking away from him and selling to me, right, for 11000 okay? But you have to decide what is your best, you have to compare and decide your best option. Okay? He says he's going to pay you in cash now, okay? we need to buy something else this week. I'm going to pay you with a credit card, maybe you don't get the money until later, right, uh, until the end of the month. Okay, or you, uh, you're sure he's going to pay you today. You have a little bit of doubt about whether I'm really going to buy or not. Okay, I said I was interested. 
which are not 100% sure I'm going to buy, whereas he has the money, he's showing you the money today, right? So there might be a reason that you prefer to buy from him, okay? You say, the difference is just $500, he's paying me in cash now, I'm sure about it, I'll take the money. So, even though we don't have the I'm just making the point, it's better to have a Zopa, but even if we don't have a Zopa, could be the case, we can still negotiate and find a way to get the value for two people. So did you explain to your friend Zopa with an example? <laughs> explain to your partner Zopa? Yes. You can draw on a page like I did. So make some drawing. Show them what a Zopa is. So, 
Any questions about ZOPA? What does ZOPA stand for in English? English. Zone of Potential Agreement. What does BATMA stand for? Best alternative. Best alternative? To the Do you like abbreviations? Which do you prefer to say every time? Best alternative to a negotiated agreement or BATMA? <laughs> Zone of Potential Agreement or ZOPA? ZOPA. <laughs> Yes. So Americans are, maybe they're smarter than the English. Americans use a lot of abbreviations, right? They, they love abbreviations in the US. Always using abbreviation. If you go to work in some company, they often have their own abbreviation. Just people inside the company understand abbreviation, right? They don't want to. Do you think they're smart, Americans? They save time by not saying the long way every time, right? People know, it's like a different language almost, right? People in the same company know what we're talking about, the department. Like, they don't say human resources, they say HR, right? Saves time. People still know what they're talking about. Is it easier for you to use abbreviations or harder? Harder. Really? I don't think it's easier. But study is both both and I each. Study, you mean you have to learn the two of them? Yes. I see. But for me, I think that you can just use the abbreviation, right? When you're talking about negotiation, you can just say BATMA. People know about negotiation, they know what you're talking about. Okay? Or ZOPA. So, in, in, when you're using, it can be easier, right? When you're studying, it might be harder, but using could be easier. Just use the, the short one. So, another point about the BATMA is we want to make sure the other side sees you as able to walk away. So uh, it means that I, I know that you have another option and you're able to walk away. If you don't have any choice, maybe if you're negotiating with your mother, you might not have much choice, right? Living in the family, you might not be able to walk away, might not be an option, right? But uh, in other negotiations, we can walk away. So the other side should be know that I'm not too dependent on the negotiation. They're going to try and weaken the BATMA. So I have to try and protect my BATMA. So if you're going to be a salesman, probably you'll learn to weaken the other person's BATMA, right? Find their BATMA, then weaken it, right? Tell them the Audi quality is really bad, right? That kind of thing, right? So, but you have to be able to protect your BATMA. If they tell you Audi is really bad, they had a brake sense, brake problem, then you can say yes, but Audi is won the Grand Prix last year, right? And Audi does all of these things well, okay? The design is very nice. So you're protecting your BATMA against the other side. Consider worsening your BATNA in carefully selected circumstances. So sometime you can allow the other person to worsen your BATNA in order to make the deal, but only in a careful selected circumstance. And use your understanding of both sides' BATNAs to understand if negotiation can change things. So if you understand these two BATNAs, right, then we don't need to do that much negotiation, we'll find one where we're both happy, right? So if we understand where my BATNA is and their BATNA is, we can understand how much, how important negotiation is, right? Here, we can almost split the difference, 1,500, okay? But in the other case, you guys have to spend a lot of time negotiating, right? So knowing where the BATNAs are helps us to know, uh, do we need to use much negotiation or not? So let's look at an example. This is from the internet course, right? So what you're going to do is, is calculate your BATNA and ZOPA and so on, okay? So let's look at this example. You're going to sell your car to a possible buyer, John. 
John is the only person who responded to an ad that you made a week ago. So you made an ad in the newspaper or online. Okay? You need $4,000 to buy a truck you have ordered. You want to keep the, the car for three more weeks, okay? which is when the truck will arrive. The reasonable value of the car is $5,000. Do you understand reasonable? Yes. You've done research. You've looked online, you found the same type of car selling for that price. Okay? If you can't find a buyer willing to pay at least $4,500, you'll sell it to your friend Mary. Okay? Why? You know that Mary will let you keep your car for the next three weeks. And maybe you prefer to sell it to your friend at a lower price. Okay? So, uh, this is the information. Then the questions are, first of all, what is your overall goal? in reaching a negotiated agreement with John. So we can look back here. So question number one, what is your goal? Can anybody answer? Your goal is to sell your car. Very easy, right? Maybe at a high, at a high price, right? Number two is what are the issues? Okay, one issue is you need to buy a truck. You said keep for three weeks. You need to keep your car for three weeks. Any other issues? So number three, we are going to talk about what is your bot map. Okay, number four, we are going to discuss with your partner. Number four, what is your reservation price? Reservation price means the lowest price you will accept. Okay. Number five, what is the reasonable price or most likely price? And then number six, what is your stretch goal? Your stretch goal basically means, we're going to explain later, your stretch goal basically means uh, what, where you start negotiating. Okay. So where are you going to start negotiating? What price are you? What are, what's the first price you're going to say? That's your stretch goal. Do you understand stretching? Five. So discuss with your partner and write the answers for number three, number four, number five, number six. Make a line. Make a line with numbers: four thousand, five, four, five thousand, and write on each one. What is it? Okay. Is it a reservation price? Is it a stretch goal? Okay. Stretch goal is not included. You have to think yourself. Make your own stretch goal. Okay. So discuss with your partner and write down on the line. What, write on the line, what's your partner? Write on the line, what's your reservation price? What's your reasonable price and what's your stretch goal? Thank you. 
Stretch goal and, and uh, still have to do stretch goal and reasonable price. Start your negotiation out. First price you're going to tell me. Hmm. 
5천이 5천이 좀 있어. 아니 5천 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 
then we can reasonable research. Uh, sorry, we reasonable. can research and see the reasonable price. We can put our reservation price in here, and then clearly we're going to make a stretch call. If I want to sell the car for 5,000, am I going to start negotiating at 5,000? No. What's going to happen if I start negotiating at 5,000? It's going to go down from there, right? So we have to start at the higher than the price we want. This is a concept, after I studied negotiation, this was the concept which helped me most doing negotiation after that time. Stretch goal. I used not to do stretch goal, but now I use stretch goal. Stretch goal is effective for negotiation, but embarrassing. So my, my wife doesn't like shopping with me or negotiating with me because I, I make some stretch goal, and sometimes it's ridiculous, and the other people laugh, right? Because the price is too high or too low. So other people are laughing, and my wife feels embarrassed. But I don't feel embarrassed, right? The other person is also using a stretch goal, right? For example, I'm in China, I'm buying a t-shirt. T-shirt costs $10. Well, I don't know, I'm just a tourist, right? Actually, it just costs one dollar for the person to buy it, okay? So I think it's ridiculous, or my wife thinks it's ridiculous to make an offer of two dollars for the t-shirt, right? People, you're laughing, right? And the shop assistant would probably be like, oh, no, 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 right? Are you crazy? Two dollars, right? But actually, if you start at two dollars, then in the end, you can buy the t-shirt for five dollars. Okay? But what most people will do is they will start at five dollars. What are you going to end up buying the t-shirt for if you start at five dollars? Or seven dollars or eight dollars, right? Do you understand? Yes. So nowadays I use that and people is laughing at me. But I did, you know, the person bought the t-shirt for just one dollar. So, I, I can try to make a stretch goal as very low, okay? And then what happens is if we start from this point, we get back to here, okay? If we start from this point, we get to here. So if I'm bargaining for the car and I start here, I'm going to end up here, okay? If I start here, then maybe I'm going to end up here and get my reasonable price in the end. So the other person will make their, their, their one the same, right? They might make their stretch goal as 4,000. Okay? So imagine that they started at 4,000 and I started at 5,000. Then we'd end up here, 4,500. Okay? But if they start at 4,000 and I start at 6,000, then we end up at 5,000. Okay? So if one person is using the stretch goal and another person is not, then you can end up with a bad deal. So next time you're negotiating with your mother, you can use stretch goals, right? I want a holiday for two weeks, a five-star hotel in, in Italy, right? Then in the end, you just want to go on the trip to Busan, right? Then your mother says, go to Busan, and you say, oh, okay then, I'll go to Busan. Right? Okay, do you understand? But there's danger. If your stretch goal is completely unreasonable, people might walk away, right? So your mother might walk away. Stop the negotiations. Could be the same. It depends. In this case, because Mary is our friend, we prefer to sell the car to Mary, right? So reservation price is going to be higher than that because Mary is my friend. I want to sell the car to her to help her, right? Do you understand? Yes. But in another case, it might be the same, and it might even be lower because my Batman, I might have to spend more time or go to another city, okay? But I can buy it now here, so I'm prepared to buy for another price or sell for another price. Okay, so reservation price doesn't have to be higher. It's a good question. It doesn't have to be here, right? 
reservation price could also be here because I can sell the car today. So now I prefer to sell today, so actually I'll sell for cheaper than my other one. But just the example we looked at, Mary was our friend, and Mary was letting us keep the car for three weeks. So we what if the other person says we can keep the car for three weeks? Maybe we can change our reservation point, right? We can do that kind of negotiation. The other person can say, okay, I'll let you keep the car for three weeks. And you say, okay, then I can sell for 4200 Now the value of friendship is just $200, right? So, any other question? In this case, stretch floor means more than five dollars. Uh, stretch goal, yes, it has to be more than 5000 You think the reasonable price is 5000 that you found on the internet. So you're going to ask for more at the start. Or if you just ask, if you're like, just ask for 5000 you're going to get caught because your reservation price is 4500 You're prepared to sell for that price. Okay? But you don't want to sell for that price. You want to sell for 5000 Okay? So if you start at 5,000, it's going to come back to 4,500. Right? Do you think you can use the stretch goal in your life? Yes. Do you feel embarrassed using stretch goal? Yes. From that person, in that negotiation. You should know before you go into the negotiation. What's the last price I'm going to accept today? can change if they offer you something else, right? But well, you should have that in your mind. So, any more questions about this? No. No? So stretch goal, in negotiation research, it shows that people who select the largest stretch goal are the most successful. So when I studied about negotiation, this was the most useful thing I learned. Okay, using stretch goal, and making a large stretch goal that looks like it's ridiculous, but not too large, then this can help in the negotiation because it starts from this price instead of this price. Okay? So in, people tend to go closer. We'll talk about later in psychology. People tend to go closer to the, this price. You mentioned this price, right? Then the other price. But the problem is if the stretch goal is completely unreasonable, people might walk away. So don't make completely unreasonable stretch goal. In the case in China, I said, woman just brought for one dollar, so even at two dollars, she's making a profit. So my stretch goal was not completely unreasonable. Okay. So, uh, do you have any other question? No. no. So then, let's finish there for today. Thank you.